Hey guys, Frodo Chris here from the YouTube channel Sabrosa. Today I want to give you a tour of my alchemy lab that I have set up in my kitchen here. So one of the main pieces of my my kitchen alchemy setup is my is my distillation set here. So this is a this is a vacuum distillation set, and this is used for doing fractional distillation. So you can see here I have this receiving cow with three different uh, with three different reception flasks and this and then this way we can we can separate things by the by the the boiling point of the different molecules and you could separate separate out say like water from alcohol or with with fractional distillation you can separate out several several uh, different compounds uh, this is my round bottom flask here and I have a glass funnel that I use to, to put the material in into the round bottom flask here. Uh, this is called a heating and stirring mantle and this this operates using uh, a magnet and and heat and so this stirs and heats uh, a liquid. This this liquid turns into a steam and and goes up into this column. So in alchemy we, we would talk about the 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 above and the below and and as as this steam comes up to the top here it recondenses and cools with this cooling chamber coming back down again as a liquid so we're taking we're taking uh, our our material and and this turning it into a steam and then as it reaches the top and cools it turns back into a liquid and we're able to we're able to separate the different molecules based on their different boiling points connected to connected to this receiving cow here is what's called a cold trap and and if this were an operation here where we have this cork we'd have some dry ice and the function of the cold trap is to keep the is to keep the pump cool so we're going to run we would run the whole operation under a vacuum and this, to keep the vacuum pump cool we would use this we would use this cold trap and that just prevents any moisture from getting into the pump and it also keeps keeps it cooler and so any moisture that comes down immediately freezes to the bottom here instead of going into the pump and also keeps because the the cooler a vacuum pump runs the more efficient it would run but when I when I take out the receiving flasks if it's a thicker material uh, it's very helpful to have one of these one of these little tripods and you can you can set your receiving flask right in the tripod and you could use like a heat gun or whatever you needed to do to get the material back out of your receiving flask. So it's good to have an extra one of those. Uh, these are just standard lab stands here with the clamps. And uh, all these connections are 2440 ground glass and I'm using metal ket clips. I had a plastic uh, ket clip here and it melted so I, re I replaced all those. And I replaced all these lines with a with a, a very heavy hose that won't uh, that won't be pinched uh, under under pressure. So this is the uh, this is the uh, distillation apparatus here. So uh, pretty much all alchemy labs would have some sort of distillation setup. It could be a simple distillation setup, or it could be more more complex like this. And a lot of alchemy labs have a much more complex system than I have here. Uh, to cool this, to cool this chamber here, I have a, I have a bucket over here, and this is, uh, this is my chiller bucket where I, I have, I'll keep ice and cold water in this bucket to the left, and and that will enable me to, uh, to keep this, keep this as cool as possible, and and that's what helps that steam turn back into a liquid. On the left, I have my magnetic stir plate. Uh, with my 2,000 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, and that operates on the same principle as the um, as the heating and stirring mantle, where you've got um, an electromagnet inside, and you take a small magnet that looks like a it looks like a white pill basically, and you take that magnet and you put it in inside the flask with your liquid, and that will stir your liquid for you. Um, next to the Erlenmeyer flask here, I have a couple of books. This is a really great book organic laboratory techniques and this this just goes through some of the different um, some of the different procedures to help you help you with different boiling points and um, and how to clean and take care of your equipment I also have copies of of P call and T call which are 
written by Anne and Alexander Shulgin. It's really uh, some fascinating stuff. I have my, um, my microscope here, and I've got a slide where I've got some plant crystals I was looking at. Um, this, is, uh, this is one of my coffee makers. This is, uh, this is called a siphon brewer, and this is a Hario siphon brewer. And basically how this works is uh, you, you, you put water in here, and you light the burner here, and you put coffee in here with a filter that sits in the middle, and as and as as you boil the water, it goes up the stem, it goes in here with the coffee, and and brews brews the uh, grounds in the water, and then as you remove the heat, that creates a vacuum, and it helps assist the gravity in pulling the in pulling the brewed coffee down through here, down through that filter in the middle, and um, and then the top just pops off, and you can pour your cup of coffee with the handle there. So these are really neat, and they're. They're neat for making a lot more than just coffee. You could do you you could use this to make any kind of uh, hot water infusions, or you could use it to make tinctures or all kinds of stuff. You could medicinal teas, so it can be used for a lot more than just as a coffee maker. I like to use it for my uh, herbal medicine making. So on the upper shelves, I have a collection of of canning jars and different um, glasses. I have some distilled water. Uh, when you're doing chemistry uh, experiments and uh, you always want to use distilled water so that your pH is at a set point. Um, so uh, at the very top of my cupboards here I just like to keep some extra storage containers. So here on the top shelf I have a few different things that I work with. Uh, this is a tool that I made and this is for uh, warming solvents. Um, this is a this is an old antique oil can and I, I attached a thermometer to it and this is for this is for heating up solvents to a specific temperature and you set this basically in a water bath and and then you just keep an eye on the temperature when it's ready to go. I have a I have a spare coffee grinder back here. I have some antique bottles, some liquid mercury. Um, this is sulfur and this is pink Himalayan salt, so you have that tria prima of mercury, sulfur, and salt. I just have some different dropper bottles and stuff. Um, down below here I have these smaller bottles that I like to, I like to make up my own tinctures and share them with friends. So I make little labels and put them on there and so these are some, these are ideal little jars to, to have around. There are some really tiny ones here, and then there's some medium-sized ones here. Um, and, and these are all some antique jars that I found around the antique store. I have some pH strips here, and these are really good for uh, testing the pH of, of, of your project. That You might have a target pH and, and be able to use these strips to, to test that. On this shelf, I have some more jars, and um, these are some of my favorite these are some of my favorite little jars here and these I found these white lids and these are really excellent for writing on I have a I have a little grease pen and you can write on the you can write on the tops of these and clean them off pretty easily so I have a whole bunch of different dried herbs and different dried gourmet mushrooms and things um, I have some microscope slides here that I use with my microscope I like to do I like to do some spore prints so here I've got uh, these are some plant crystals behind there, but this is what a what a spore print looks like, where you do it directly on the slide and you can look directly at the spores. So that's pretty neat. I've got a neat um, mushroom collection growing in the backyard. Um, here I just have some different herbs, some more dried mushrooms. These are some of the projects that I've worked that I've been making. Uh, I have some plant crystals here. These are crystal skull vodka bottles, and I use I like to use the crystal skull vodka when I'm doing my different projects. And and um, these are these make really nice gifts where you you can put a little label on the back there. Up here on this shelf, I have a few mortar and pestle. Um, I have some digital scales, so when I'm adding different um, when I'm adding different ingredients into my flask, I can weigh them out first. So a lot of times that they go by weight. Um, I have a couple of really neat jars here, um, and these are really fantastic for making 
uh, tinctures with because um, they're an opaque jar so they don't let any light in so oftentimes when you'll you'll read uh, instructions on how to make a tincture it will say it will say keep this in a in a warm dark place or keep this in a cool dark place so just depending on which one then you can use these and that keeps the sunlight out and just remember to shake it every day and also I have a, a white grease pen that I can write instructions on or keep track of how many days it's been And then up on the top right, I just have some different various tools, some kitchen timers, some high vacuum grease, some filters, and uh, just, you know, uh, like Phillips screwdrivers for these different connections on the, on the distillation apparatus. These are my two favorite shelves where I have all my different Pyrex glassware. And some of the stuff is antique, like I have a couple antique ones over here. Um, this is a really neat... Um, Erlenmeyer coffee cup that I have. Um, I have some open top. Uh, I have some open top measuring glassware for measuring things by volume. In the back, these are called S stops, and uh, these are used for fermentation. So you would take a you would take one of your uh, Erlenmeyer flasks, and what you would do would be use one of those s stops and that would allow gas to escape but it would keep any air oxygen or any contaminants from from entering well these are these are about as good as it gets for for media storage so you know if you're making plant crystals or, or stuff like that then these are really awesome bottles to to use um, then I have here some round bottom flasks behind those I have these those Erlenmeyer flasks and I um, have found some neat little round balls that, that I use as, as round bottom flasks as well. And I use those like in a sand bath um, by putting sand in a pan and then I put it on, on the burner that way or, or, use, the, or use the heating mantle. Um, I found this set up here at the antique store and this is really neat for doing side-by-side -side comparisons like um, I had a I had a meat hole test that I do uh, here on my YouTube channel and uh, Where I test different different types of uh, mushrooms and by and by adding these different dried mushrooms into a solution of water and meat hole um, it, If it turns this specific purple color, you'll know that there is psilocybin present. So um, that's that's a really neat uh, that's a really neat tool to have is that side-by-side -side, uh, comparison that holds up different test tubes and then then back here in the corner I have a whole bunch of different assorted sizes of test tubes and glassware these kitchen curtains were made by my by a friend of mine uh, especially for me my friend Samantha and uh, they're really awesome and they, they show all the different elements and I thought that they really they really tie the kitchen together very nicely. Um, this is this is a um, filtering flask, and basically I, I hook up my vacuum pump here, and um, you can either use the the filters that come with this in different sizes, or different um, different microns that is, and also you could use a coffee filter. So like when I'm I when I'm doing a like a lavender infused witch hazel um, this is a really great tool um, to gets the gets the filtering job done and and seconds instead of hours it would save you a lot of time to have one of those in your alchemy lab at home um, over here in this jar i've got um, an oregon reishi mushroom that i have drying and and down below in the cupboards i have several different projects in different states of completion I, I like think it's good to have a little bit of artwork in the in the, in your lab. It's common for alchemists to have different alchemical pieces of artwork in their lab. Uh, this is a um, this is a blotter art print uh, from uh, an artist in in New York, Rafty, and this is signed by Hamilton Morris. We drew this drew this little molecule there, so that's a really neat piece of art. And I'm gonna figure out where to put that here. In the this is the um, the emerald tablet. I have the I have what's called a pressure temperature nomograph and this is used for calculating different boiling points when you when you boil something under a vacuum you it, it boils at a much lower temperature so you're able to gauge what your what your actual temperature and over is. here in the corner I have 
I have what looks like a, a table of the elements, but it's an alchemical table of symbols or an alchemical table of elements. And so I appreciate you guys letting me take the time to share this with you. And I would love to hear from you guys about what kind of projects that you like to work on. And, uh, and I would love to just hear from you guys with your thoughts and ideas. So thanks again for taking the time to watch the video. If you want to like, share, and subscribe, that'd be really great. I appreciate you helping me get my channel moving and off the ground. So thanks again for watching. Peace Profound and LVX.